on Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels, author Ashley Bunting shows us how to make trendy floral jewelry using parachute cord and other supplies from your beading stash. And Ashley, let's just take a minute here to talk about trend spotting and kind of where you get your inspiration, what you look for. Um, I really find inspiration lately with cords, um, and what is nice about them is that they're easily obtainable. You can find them at um, any local craft store, and um, I think that's really where a trend grows, is if you can find a material and build it into something you love, then other people are going to love it too, and expand on your ideas, and take your designs into their own yeah. um, jewelry. So, right. Well, it looks like you have an eye for color too. I love working with color, yes. Um, and things like the parachute cord that's really popular now um, comes in fabulous colors, bright neons, dark, you know, more utilitarian colors. Um, and uh, I really love working with different tones and different color ways. Yeah, I can tell from looking at your work. It's Thank beautiful. you. Thanks. And it looks like you have a couple of, we're going to be making this flower brooch here. Yes. It looks like you also have a couple of other ideas for parachute cord. Yes, I do. Um, there's uh, this piece here that we'll be working on, um, and then there is some other um, applications for the cord that maybe you haven't okay. seen before. Well, we'll take a look at those when we finish looking sure. at your flower. Wonderful. All right. Um, so this here is a um, parachute cord or um, flower brooch. And to start that, um, I'm using the uh, 550 cord, which is the thicker version. Um, it comes a little bit thinner, but you want this thicker stuff here. Um, and to work with this, you need three different colors of the cord. I'm using a hot pink, um, an orange, and a deep green. Um, so I'm going to start using um, some high durability scissors here and cut four inches of... I can hold it for you. Thanks of the pink cord here. Right. Now, um, parachute cord is what's called a kern mantle, um, and that means that it has this white core or kern and an outer mantle or sheath, this pink color. So to start the project, we're just going to remove that kern. What's left is a tube. Um, in a great color. Um, now you could just do a simple heating the ends of this and that's what's going to make um, a tube shape. Um, but for this project we're actually going to flare the lip of this tube um, to start our flower shape. Now you can use your fingertip to flare this um, but any sort of smooth pen-like um, implement will work great for flaring out that end. This is just a pen knife. So all you're going to do is apply pressure to the end of that tube and spin your cord. You can see that it starts to flare out. And because we're doing three different colors, the pink is color number one, the interior of the flower, and then there's orange and the green. So the pink flare you want to have the least amount so it doesn't cover up your orange. So once you've reached a desired um, lip, uh, looks about like that. That looks good. You're real, really starting to see kind of a flower petal yes. feel. Yes, yep. so you start to see that that looks very much like the interior of a flower. Um, and then to stop the fraying process, I'm just going to hit the very outside edge with a lighter. Now you can use any sort of household lighter, um, a butane, a Zippo, whatever um, sort of lighter you want to use. Okay. And that helps that finish. It does look frayed, but it's not going to continue fraying. Right, on the exactly, cord. yes. Right. So that is color number one, and you repeat that for an orange tube. And to connect the pieces, here is my beginning pink color. And I've created just out of a scrap piece of wire a needle. And you want to hit the end of the pink again with a little bit of heat. And that keeps your needle from just pulling out the end when you do try to get it into the orange tube. Okay, so you can use it to thread it right through there. Exactly. And this can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes it takes a little bit of finagling. You've got to kind of roll the tubes together. Um, but I'm just going to slip that needle inside of the orange. 
So this idea of leather of layering too is another trend I think that we see around. You know, all kinds of different layering. Is yes, happening. yes, lots of um, metal. Um, you can use metal with leather and um, all kinds of different materials that just get layered together to give you really great textures, right. um, different colors. Um, it's really a cool uh, mixed media trend that's in the jewelry world now. Okay. So now I've got my pink and my orange connected. And the next step would be to take that needle out and again just put it through the orange and pink. So essentially we're just doing the same process again to get the um, green tube on top of the core. Okay. So as you're working there, then when you're building it together, our next step is finishing the top. Um, we're going to actually finish the base of the oh, of right. the twig first, and oh, then we're going to move into the and top. And then build it onto the top. Mm -hmm. So I've just taken the needle off of this one. So you can see the orange and the green. It's a little different uh, lengths because of how it's been frayed and melted and everything. So I'm going to take my scissor again and just go ahead and even up that end and just cut right through all three layers. You can see now that there um, is a tube. There's still a hole in the middle of that. So I'm going to hit the end of this again with that heat and melt the three layers together. And this you want to give a little bit more heat than what you did to the lip of the flower. But you want to make sure that there's still an open tube through there because we are going to be feeding a wire through that tube. Okay. So that is the base of your first um, twig of the flower sprig. Um, the next part, we are going to take um, a piece of 22 gauge wire and cut five inches. And again, all of these measurements are not, they don't need to be perfect. It's just a reference number. Okay, and we'll have the instructions too for mm -hmm. when people want to make this at home. So I've cut my wire and I'm gonna build a homemade head pin. Um, I'm just gonna take this tweezer nose plier and bend over the very end of my wire and flatten that out. And that's just gonna create a stop for my bead so it doesn't fall off the end and it holds everything together. All right. Um, I'm using a um, crystal marguerite and it has a front and a back to this bead, and I actually like to put the back forward. Um, I think the colors look really nice with the colors in the project, and it has a really nice carnival um, glass look. Um, so that's another thing that I really like to look for in my jewelry is, um, you know, maybe not always doing the, the most, right, the you most know, common. the most common answer. Another um, hot trend. Hot, hot trend. <laughs> um, Making it your own. Yes. I definitely find that um, problem solving is the most exciting part of jewelry making. Um, faked, finding something, maybe not being that interested in it, mm -hmm. and finding a way to really love that material mm -hmm. and do a new, new a spin new take on, it. on it. So now I've just slid my um, head pin that I made through my crystal and through my tube that I just created. Um, to start building off of this, you can really do whatever pattern you like. Maybe you want a, a ton of flowers on there, or maybe you just want um, one or two. All right. Um, so I will take another finished tube, and off of my base, I'm going to lay my next twig where I'd want it to attach. And you can see I want it to come in at an angle, so I want to cut that twig at an angle so it matches. So you're going to cut all the way through all the All the way all through the again. Mm -hmm. So let's lay that down. Maybe I want to just attach it there. That looks good. And I'll cut that layer. Just make sure I've got a nice um, clean end there. So I'll cut up a little bit of those fraying bits. And I'm going to melt that end also so it doesn't continue to fray. Okay. And then those heated fibers. Yes. So this is all, you know, a synthetic material, and that's why you're getting this response. If it was a natural, it'd be like a candle wick, and it right. would just catch on fire. Um, but instead, it's going to melt. So I have another um, pre-made head pin here that I made earlier, and I'm going to slide that into my second 
twig sprig. And then to attach it, I will punch it through the base twig, which I have started over here. Um, sometimes you'll want to use uh, an awl or another sharp implement to start your hole because it can be a little bit difficult to get through those three layers of fibers. So you need to make a pilot hole there. Exactly. And you're, you know, if you don't do that, sometimes your wire will bend. Yeah. But you can see here, it's just punched through the layer here and the end comes out the same um, base tube here. Okay, and then how do you finish the ends here? Yeah, so to finish, you can see in the sample project, um, I've created little coils that make kind of like a root system. Um, and to do that... Do you do that as you go along? I usually like to do that at the very end. Oh, okay. In case maybe I don't love where one is positioned, you know, it's very flexible. You can always take, one, take out, one out, add a different one. Um, it's also nice, these are all... Um, flexible so you can really direct which way you want your flowers to be facing. Oh, yeah. Um, so I will just take some round nose pliers and I'm going to grasp the end of my wire. And I might cut that off just because it's you know a little bent up from getting it through there. So I've cut off my little bit there. Okay. And I'm gonna grab with my round nose, twist reposition and twist and you just continue doing this until it eats up all of that wire length and that's really what's going to hold the whole piece together and it makes a nice finished look rather than it just having like one simple loop on the bottom or right. having to add glue or something yeah. this way you use that finishing to add another element to your piece you always want to think about um, you know, what if some, someone's looking at the back of a piece? Um, is it as finished as the front of the piece? Jewelry is a, is a three-dimensional medium, so people are gonna see it in the round, and you wanna make sure it's gonna lay correctly and um, really work with um, actually wearability. Sure. So I've got my little coils all set there, and you can just kind of play with them until you like the positioning. And I'm just gonna bend my flowers so they all face forward. And you could add as many branches as you wanted to. Yeah, this one's just a little sprig because I was thinking um, I brought out an alligator clip here. So um, to finish it, we're going to glue um, our alligator clip on there, um, just with some epoxy, um, any sort of heavy duty glue that will work for uh, metal and fiber. So I'll just lay out a bead of glue there, and then I'm just going to press it onto I'll the main thanks, branch of my little flower sprig, right, All right. there. Okay, you can just set it in here to dry if you want to. Sure. So this one you can wear. Um, you could wear it as a little a uh, hair pin, oh, yeah, a uh, hair clip, sweet. or um, a, a, a man's lapel pin. Um, you could use them as wedding accessories. Really, anything um, is possible um, with this. And what's exciting, I think, about it is that you can turn um, kind of a very utilitarian material into something that's uh, dainty and feminine, um, yeah. and really use it what would be just a cord as a uh, sculpting material. Right, you can and you really get your build trendy colors in there too. Now, yep. What other kinds of things would you make out of parachute cord? Sure, cords? sure. So this project up here um, is a nice basic one. It's a, it's a wrap bracelet um, using memory wire, and um, it is just creating tubes. Um, so it's a nice material. You get a really great texture. Um, by using the fiber, uh, but it's a nice long piece that will cover up that exposed wire. Right. Um, you can use it for the back of a necklace, maybe if you want to do heavy beads, and then just do a nice simple paracord to, tube that would be comfortable on the back of your idea. neck. Um, and then this piece here um, is made by creating uh, melting loops of the parachute cord. Um, and then um, the a uh, bright turquoise and green piece in the front 
is actually um, a macrame technique using ribbon, and the core of that is the pair. Oh, so you shoe do the cord. ribbon over the top. Yeah, so it gives you a nice thick um, building block for you to make that uh, macrame technique off yeah. of. And that looks really pretty with the scallops too. Oh, thanks. You're yeah. welcome. Um, and it's also, you know, when I, I like to approach um, materials and really experiment and it, um, learn what it's uh, what it can do and what it um, what its characteristics are. So you could see that this this is meltable because it's a synthetic. Um, it's it frays, um, and so another application that you can do is you can easily make. Um, Tassels. So those are actually made with pieces Oops, of paracord, which makes a, a tassel project a lot easier um, because you don't have to cut a yeah. million pieces. Right, that's a good idea. You can just sort of fray them out mm -hmm. and then put the end cap at the top. That looks great. Thanks. You're welcome. And let's take a look also at the this piece right here yeah. is using some jute cord on the flowers there at the front. Right, yep. So those were um, some uh, vintage copper flowers. Um, I use a lot of vintage pieces because I really like the idea of like collecting things. Yeah. And, um, and so that was built from a blank. So I found it and said, how can I make this look a little more finished? How can I make this a trendy object? Um, and so I wrapped jute around those individual flower spokes and what I find really appealing about it is that it has like the really clean sparkle of the crystal and then it has kind of the you know earthier feel of that fuzzy fiber. Oh, yeah you're to bringing it in those other fibers definitely. Mm -hmm. That's a really good a really good look and also the you know a lot of these are bringing in some other fibers into the into the jewelry. Yes yeah I've been really inspired by um, things like leather, um, uh, ribbon and lace and then kind of like a natural sec selection of like hemp cord, cotton, jute um, and really again learning those characteristics of, of you know a, a natural fiber is going to be able to be dyed and um, you can glue it or it's going to have that nice fuzzy quality where the the, nat the synthetic is going to be right. melting and um, taking those ideas and figuring out what I can manipulate with those characteristics to make a new unique project. Yeah, so. well, these are some really great ideas and a lot of inspiration here. Thank you. Thank Yeah, I really hope that, um, you know, people can, I, I love when someone can take a design or an idea that I've had and really make it their own. So yeah. maybe this is just a little snippet technique that right. they can Bill latch on. onto and, well, and find something else they love about it. Definitely. So. Well, the suede pieces too are a great example of that. I can tell that you really made those your own by snipping the ends there. Yeah. Yep. I'm so to... so those are all, um, I, I'm a big thrifter. So I, I again, I'm a, a collector of things. So my leather, I usually find, um, I recycle it. I find pieces that I can cut up. And so I, again, looked at this material and like, what can I make this into a jewelry piece? Um, it doesn't leather obviously doesn't fray so it's going to hold that edge once I, once I cut it right um, and it is um, heat treatable so those little flowers are cupped with heat so you can get a really good texture and shape um, out of out of you know a normally flat surface like a leather piece yeah those look really great and I love the way that these are kind of flaring out too yes yeah, so again that's that's on trend with the layering technique where it has like a fuzzy suede feel and then it's got a copper flower and it's got some crystal in it so um, uh, it's got a really great texture to it so definitely mm -hmm. okay well thank you so much for sharing all of these ideas with us Ashley thank these you. are really a lot of inspiring pieces and I can't wait to make some oh thanks yeah, it's been great welcome. being here all right, good.